Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and this week I want to show you a cool little utility uh, tool from PreSonus. It's part of Studio One. It's called the Audio Batch Converter. This is a very cool uh, handy little utility to convert files and such. I'm going to show you how to use this in this video um, and then I'm going to talk to you about it and tell you where you can get it. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when I'm posting new content. And if you're a Studio One user especially, I want you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com as I have a lot of training courses that are specific to Studio One. And as of the recording of this video, all recorded in Studio One version five. So you can follow along with me step-by-step. Step. Click the link in the description box below, go check it out. And if you stay around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a discount on some of those training courses. So stick around. So here we are at the start page of Studio One. So when you launch Studio One, there is an add-on that you can purchase if you already have a license called the Audio Batch Converter. It's a $50 um, option right here. Let me show it to you on the screen. Here's the Audio Batch Converter. It's a $50 to $49.95 and you can install this as an add-on to Studio One. However, you can also get the Audio Batch Converter as part, for free as part of your PreSonus Sphere member. If you're a PreSonus Sphere member and you pay your monthly or your annual subscription, you get the Audio Batch Converter plus a ton of other tools that you can check out. And I have a video where I do a whole walkthrough of PreSonus Sphere and I talk to you about why you think it's a good value and who I think it's for and who I think it may not be for. Check the link in the description box below. You can go check out that video. But anyway, once you install the audio batch converter, whether you pay for it for 50 bucks and download it or whether you have it as part of PreSonus Sphere and you install the add-on for free, the start page is gonna look like this, obviously, and in the top left-hand corner, you are now gonna see this little icon here at the top left. This is the audio batch converter. We click on that, and we're gonna get this screen here. So what this is allows you to do is several different things for audio, and I wanna show you how to do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop or drag our source files here. So let's say you get a bunch of audio files given to you from someone that recorded music, let's say, in Logic or GarageBand, or even Pro Tools, where they've given you all their files, all their audio files and or stem files, and they're all stereo tracks. Your kick's a stereo track, your snare's a stereo track, and you wanna make those mono tracks. This is a great little utility to do that with. Let's say you wanna convert and change the uh, bit depth and the sample rate of the audio that you've been given. This is a good way to do it as well. So let me show you how it works. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag in some source files. So I have a, um, a little example on, on our uh, desktop here called audio test files that I made. I got three files here. It's gonna left click and drag it into this box here. So here we go. So we get a lot of information here about the audio. We have the source file names. Here's the name of the three files. We have the type of file, it's a WAV file. It's 44, one, it's 16 bit. We have uh, two stereos and a mono file here. And you can see our electric guitar is a stereo file. The length, where it's the peak, the RMS, and the um, and the long, uh, the, U, the U, uh, LUFS as well. And then what folder it's in. Now, if you don't want to see the peak and the RMS values, you can just deselect this box here if you just want to see the file names and the length. But I like seeing all of this other data, which is nice. <clears throat> and there are several things we can do to it. If we uh, look down over to the right here, we have a process rack, and our process rack allows us to do some processing to these files before we convert it and export them as the new file. Uh, over to the right of the process rack, we have a bunch of processes. So we can either format, we can repair files, we have declickers if, uh, if in, in all kinds of uh, invert phase uh, types of tools. We also have volume fades gain. So in other words, let's say we wanted to put a fade on our files. We just left click and dragged it to the process rack. And now we can, we can fade it in. We could change the curve type. We can make it linear or concave or convex. You could do a fade out of the audio files if you wanted to do that. So you can kind of prep the file if you needed to do that. Um, or you can just shut that off by turning off the power button. So you can do processing to the raw files before we process them, or you don't have to. Down here is something interesting. We have our output format, where um, right now all these uh, boxes, type, resolution, sample rate, and channels are unchecked, so they're gonna keep it 
as the same as the source file. So if I were to just, if I didn't want to change anything, I would keep all these boxes unchecked. But typically you would use the batch converter because you're going to make a change. So let's talk about the type. So right now it's a WAV file. We could change it to all these different file types here. So let's say you wanted to change it to MP3, we could do that. Say you wanted uh, AIFF files, you could do that. Or FLAC files, you can do that. The resolution, right now it's at 64, um, Right now it's set, it's 16 bit. We could change it to anything we want. Say 32 bit float. So say we wanted to, and then say our sample rate, right? Right now it's at 44.1, right? Up here it's 44.1. Let's say we wanted to make it 48 or 88 or 96, whatever, whatever um, sample rate we want. Let's go, let's just do 48 for the sake of demonstration. Now the channels, they're mono or stereo. We can either make them all stereo or all mono, however we want to do that, or if we want to just keep them the way they are, we could keep them the way that they are. And then we could choose our output location. We can either put them back into the source folder that they came out of, if we want, or we could create a whole new folder if we want. So let's say we want to select a new folder here, and let's just put it on the desktop, and we can actually go right into this, uh, into the original folder, create a new folder, and call this new converted files, whatever, okay? And then once we're done, we can go ahead and process and it'll process those files. It will change the conversion. It'll make it a WAV file, the 32-bit float, 48K. If we decided to put fades and stuff on it right now that's shut off, we could do that. Um, and the last thing I wanna show you as well is uh, down here in the bottom section, we can actually preview our files here. So if we select the first file, we could preview it. Or the second file, here's a base file. Or our electric guitar, you can see that's a stereo file. Okay, so you have all your preview stuff there as well. So once you've gone ahead and you've uh, ch chose what you want to do, you just hit process and it'll do this kind of quickly because we only have three files here. And you'll see down here, it's showing you the progress bar. It's pretty quick. So imagine you can do this with an, with an entire session. Let's say you get 50, 60, 70 tracks from somebody and they give it to you in 16 bit, you know, 44 one, and you want to bring it to an MP3 or MP3 files or something. And you want to convert it before you import it into your session and start working with it. This is a great way to do it, and it's all perfectly integrated with Studio One. Once it's done, you'll see that it's success here. And if I were to minimize and go to my folder that we have opened here, oops, let's take a look here. Here's our new converted files, and here it is. Here's our three, they're now WAV files, and if I show you the get info, you will see that these have been converted to 32-bit 48K from 16-bit 44.1. So that is, the batch converter, very, very handy, especially when you're working with a lot of imported files or you wanna change something from a mono to a stereo file or what have you. This is a great way to really do it and it's quick and it's easy and it's all part of the start page on Studio One. It's this little icon up here. Now, here's something that's a little tip here that I learned. Again, if you are a PreSonus Fear member, this comes for free, you can just download it and install it. When you sign up for Studio One, when you first get your version of Studio One, if you um, join Studio One for the first time as a Sphere member, then this little tip doesn't really pertain to you. You've already activated it, you've already downloaded your stuff, everything should be fine. However, let's say you're a Studio One user from the past or someone who used to just buy the license prior to Studio One 5 coming out, that's when Sphere was launched, and let's say you just bought your upgrade from say version four to version five. You just had a license, you just owned it. You didn't pay any subscriptions, anything like that, like me. And now you decided you wanted to, to join PreSona Sphere because of all the great value that you get and everything I talked about in the video that's linked in the description box. Well, what you need to do is you need to, you don't have to uninstall Studio One and reinstall Studio One from PreSona Sphere. You can use the current version of Studio One that you already have installed if you have professional However, because Studio One Sphere gives you professional. However, you have to make sure that you activate your Studio One license that you had prior to Sphere. 
you need to reactivate it so it will see the add-ons like the audio batch converter when you install it. Let me show you how to do that. If you come up to Studio One here in the menu, you see where it says Studio One Activation? And you're gonna get this dialog box, Activate with Presona Sphere. Or if you were like me prior to doing this, I had activated my purchased version of Studio One because that was how I had Studio One, I just bought it. There was no Presona Sphere when I had when I first installed Studio One. So you wanna to come to this and you wanna make sure you click on Activate with Presona Sphere, hit Activate, and then that will allow you to use things like the audio batch converter. You'll see it on the start screen and everything that happens with Presona Sphere as you download stuff from the Presona Sphere um, section of your My Presona account, everything will just work with Studio One and you don't have to worry. If you don't do this, and let's say you have just the purchase version, and then you go to install, let's say the batch converter like I originally did, and then I launched, relaunched Studio One, I didn't see my batch converter icon up here. I reached out to the support staff at PreSonus, and they said, you need to activate it as PreSonus Sphere because now you are a PreSonus Sphere member. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So any of the add-ons, this is true. If you go from a license that you owned prior, and now you're joining the membership Presona Sphere. Make sure that you go in here, Studio One, activate it, and make sure that this little button is checked and hit activate. And you should have no problem. So I hope you found this little video helpful to you. And I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the audio batch converter. Whether you're a Presona Sphere member or not, the audio batch converter is a killer add on that you should have, and it integrates perfectly with Studio One and there's a lot of cool things you can do and it's a great little utility. Great job PreSonus for putting something like this out. I use it all the time. Now, I wanna thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Like I said at the beginning of the video, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, especially if you're watching this video and you're a Studio One user. I want you to check out the Studio One training courses that I have on my website. They are perfect for beginners or people that are new from coming from another DAW to Studio One. Check them out. If you like uh, the training and you want to pick up one of the courses, I want to give you a 25% discount. I want to give you a coupon code that you can use at checkout. The coupon code is YouTube25. Just use that coupon code, YouTube25 at checkout. It'll take 25% off any one of the training courses on my website, Studio One courses, and any other course on my website. And just for your information, even the other courses on my website, aside from the specific Studio One training courses, all my generic mixing, mastering, EQ compression, parallel compression, recording, and all that, all those different types of courses, those were all recorded using Studio One version five. So even though those, those generic training courses, the techniques and concepts will apply to any DAW, but they're all done in Studio One, just so you know. So go check out homerecordingmadeeasy.com, use that coupon code, get yourself a discount on some training. And until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so very much for joining me and I'll see you guys soon. Take care everybody.